Hello, it's Tom Morgan here. Welcome to another weekly update covering uh, news and events in you know the development space of Skype for Business and Microsoft Teams. A couple of things um, from this week. Um, it's, it's really been it's, it's been a fairly quiet week, I'd say. Uh, there's probably a number of reasons for that. Um, we've had Thanksgiving uh, in the US, and um, also it's kind of the run up to Christmas. People are taking holidays. Um, so the general kind of pace of things seems to slow down a little bit. Um, and also there's a number of commitments. Um, so if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I'll say a couple of weeks ago, it was back in October, and uh, the Microsoft Teams team um, published a roadmap for things uh, that they were gonna deliver on, um, uh, a lot of which were to do with um, converging feature parity from Skype for Business. And um, some of those had indicative timeframes towards the end of this year. Um, so I imagine the team are kind of heads down um, developing and testing those features. So it'll be good to see those kind of coming out um, over the kind of uh, calendar year split um, and into into January as well, I'm sure. So, however, there are some still some things happening. There are some, um, some interesting blog posts. And, and the first of those is um, around the bot framework. And um, it's about the bot connector code and um, the the bot framework team have put out a blog post and a couple of new uh, NuGet packages to support .NET Core. Um, so previously to this announcement, if you wanted to use the uh, uh, the bot connector, it was uh, classic .NET. You couldn't you couldn't write in Core. You now can. There's two different versions. There's one for um, ASP.NET Core one, and there's another one for ASP.NET Core two. Um, and these packages sort out the authentication stuff um, for for the bot you're making. <clears throat> so um, that's good to know. There's the the blog post uh, goes into some detail with um, some code as well about exactly how to how to provision it, how to configure it, um, and how to get it to work. And uh, both of those packages are on NuGet, so that's good news. Um, if you were either holding off um, from using the bot framework stuff. Uh, because you wanted to build it in core or you tried to build it in core and you couldn't and you'd fallen back to kind of classic .NET and you, but you want to use core then you now can so that's that's all in all a good thing uh, there was a nice um, kind of roundup post um, not specific about development actually but uh, crossing to teams for a moment um, and it was uh, on the tech community uh, site and it was an update around kind of all the stuff that's happened in November and so it's covered things that we've previously talked about um, that you might have missed as in the kind of general barrage of information. Um, things like managing Teams via PowerShell, um, which we talked about when it first came out a couple of weeks ago. Um, things like uh, user activity reporting, now, sh now including Teams alongside uh, all the other things that, that currently are on usage reporting, things like uh, you know OneDrive usage and, and email usage and SharePoint usage and Skype for Business usage and now Teams usage. Um, so uh, also tenants in the so UK customers can have um, Teams locally in their tenant. We talked about that as well. Um, some other stuff as well. Uh, some other couple of sort of features and new improvements and stuff. Uh, nothing, nothing major, but it's nice to get that kind of round up at the end of the month um, uh, as well, just to kind of see see what's going on, and it uh, it kind of reminds us that um, really over the course of you know a couple of years, Microsoft have completely changed you know how they're delivering these products. Everything is now um, it's kind of a you know it, um, multiple updates, multiple updates a month, new features rolled out. Um, you don't have to wait for big kind of point releases or, or major releases to get this stuff. Um, it's kind of been drip fed over time, which is great for everyone. Uh, it means we get these great features earlier. So all, all in all a good thing. Uh, there's a f so switching gears again, back to Skype for Business and SDN, and there's a fairly technical um, blog post around setting up SDN. And specifically, I think the, the kind of call out from this blog post um, is around using pools of SDN managers, which I didn't realize was a thing. Like I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm comfortable with the concept of, of SDN in Skype for Business um, and the idea of dialogues, uh, dialogue listeners and managers, but I, I didn't realize that you could 
you could uh, install STM manager pools and have uh, you know pools of STM managers. So, so that's quite good. It's now strongly recommended that you do that instead of deploy managers in a failover configuration. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. It goes into in the post, um, and a pool is better than a failover configuration. Um, if it's better for disaster scenarios, and there's some good detail um, about why and what you should do. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you if you look after SDN, if you manage SDN, if you're curious about SDN, if you're rolling it out, then that's worth bearing in mind, um, and it's worth considering for your DR. Uh, and then finally, I wanted to call out this um, good good blog post um, that uh, was on the Skype for Business Insider um, blog. So uh, written by Chris Williams, and it's uh, the title is Three Ways to Protect Teams Users from Malware Infected Files." So we're back to, back to Teams. Sorry, there's very little uh, continuity this week, um, and uh, the. There's three important parts to this, but the, the kind of news stuff, if you like, the new changes um, are around advanced threat protection, uh, which now um, cover Teams as well as SharePoint and OneDrive. Um, so that's good. It's not enabled by default, which is interesting. So uh, there's, there's some steps in the blog post uh, about enabling it. Um, and then Chris also covers two other things you can do um, to try and protect, protect your users from malware that may get spread via Teams. Well, that's that's good to know. Uh, again, it's not specifically dev-based, it's more IT pro stuff, um, but uh, it, it, it's good to know and it, it kind of is in that Teams space as well, so it's, uh, it's good to keep a track on. All right, that's everything I want to talk about this week. Uh, like I said, fairly quiet week, um, but it'd be interesting to see, you know, as we ramp up towards the end of the year, um, see some of those kind of announcements coming out from the Teams team um, about those convergence features. So have a great week, have a good weekend, and I will talk to you next week.